Hello, you lovely people. Hi, you kindly folk. It's been a while since we last met. Our adventures left unwoke. We've got our maps and dice in hand and tales that still provoke. Together we will journey on, our laughter will evoke. Throughout the magic realms we'll go as friendship grows and grows. So hello you lovely people and hi you kindly folk. Welcome everyone to this special fireside chat. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kyle and first off, just a little heads up, I'm battling a cold during the recording. Uh, so I apologize in advance for any coughs or sniffles that sneak their way in. We're human here, show must go on. Now, tonight's chat is all about answering questions from you, the listeners. We received some fantastic ones about the story, the characters, and the latest twists. But a fair warning, there are definitely spoilers ahead for episode 28. So if you haven't got caught up yet, or if you're trying to stay spoiler free, this might be your chance to hit pause and come back once you're ready. But if you're all caught up and you don't mind a few juicy details, grab a drink, settle in by the fire, and let's dive in. I want to talk about how our Tanga died. And I want to talk about... I just want to know if anyone else is as mad as I am. <laughs> Please got a hand up. Um, Please give me eyes that oh. make me need to address her immediately. I mean, Parrish was unconscious for that. And I I, uh, I will say again, Parrish didn't hear no up. bell. We're talking about you and your death. We're talking about, we're talking about Ortega's dying. Look up. <laughs> Uh, okay, so where do we start? Do we start with Ortega being dead? Do we start with our general thoughts on the season so far? Do we start with how much we want to hit Nile with a car? Do we start with how much we want to hit Nile with a baseball bat? Do we want to start with how much we want to hit Nile with a with the golf club? I'm just looking. I mean, <laughs> it's an open session. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why there's so much hate on Nile. I didn't, I didn't hear I anything. Just I, just heard about hitting, I just heard about hitting you as a person with my car. Uh, so I guess. Fans. Anyways, I'm sad. I'm sad about Ortega's death. I'm sad about the way that went down. And I just wonder what everyone else thinks. I think Parrot be the only one not upset with him. That's exciting. Well, he, Alice might not be upset with him. I feel like good riddance. He's gone. Yeah, that's true. I think Kyle's just like, okay, I'm out of him again. It's a pretty easy state, I think, to, to, for her to fall into. It's a natural like, state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's more unusual for her to not be mad at him. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I do think it's going to... Interesting. I'm, I I said this to Niall already, but I feel like she could go in a couple different directions based on how everybody else is feeling. Oh, sh- no perish. Um... I feel like the only (laughs) anger Parrish would have, and it'd be pretty easy to forgive, is the like, did you come into this expecting that and not tell us? And and if it was an actation, the hiding, because you didn't let the party know... And if you were doing that because we would have made different choices, it's also not okay. And oh, you could have just fucking let us take Tatiana into the Feywild and stayed behind. Understandable that you didn't. So I think he mostly just doesn't see this as resolved. Yeah, I think that's kind of how Talos feels too. It's like, okay, that was an event now. Like, it, like this is not the end. This is just a rocky spurn in your shoe in the middle. So does that mean that, that both Talis and Parrish are now looking to bring Ortega back? Fight's not even over. It, exactly. Oh, Parrish and Talis are on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to start digging. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we got, yeah, we got them on the run. actually said the same thing. <laughs> she just took a sip of tea. <laughs> but not to speak for you, actually, but you did say that exact same thing to me earlier yesterday. I sure, sure did. At this rate, Niall's not even going to be able to introduce his new PC because we're just going to force him. We're just going to force George to go back. Damn right. You know? Yeah. I just want to get this. I, I need to get this song in like the first like 20 minutes of the next session. For, uh, uh, the song I wrote, I think I'm going to play for um, Ashley, for uh, Lady Tatiana. And um, as we're sitting there sad, 
heard it. That's where I think it's best used. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to hear it, if you guys want to save it for the session, but I do. Niall, I was so mad when you died. I was so <laughs> mad. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to write a song. I'm not going to do it. I won't write a song. And then not only did I write a song, but I ended up using the like chord progression and like fingering technique that I've been holding for a very special song. And I ended up using it for fucking Ortega and God damn it. And I think it's actually pretty good. So I've got a song. If you guys want to hear it, let me know and I will put drop it in the chat. I want to hear it. I take a listen. In for sure. to it. I, I have it. Yeah, yeah. it yep, lady. Let, 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 yep, you've got it. I think in is way better. And maybe maybe we'll wait for it then, and the people who have it can have listened to it, and people who don't can hear it when it comes out. Yeah. Um, it is the saddest song I've written for D and D yet, and all these. It turns out all my songs are kind of sad. But um, tragedy bard. They can go tragedy bard, Holmes. I mean, you always change your songs. He doesn't uh, have a bard subclass yet. I don't have a subclass yet. I'm only second level. You're only second level? Yeah, I'm level seven. We've eight? been level seven for god damned ever. Oh. And, uh, hey, hey, Kyle, would you like him to have a subclass? <laughs> you want to have a subclass? <laughs> Why do I have, have an offer for you? This boy, <laughs> wouldn't that be fucking great? Wouldn't that be so good if you were able to Nocturne Lavore. <laughs> Deserves level eight, though I gotta say, part of me is not sure if I go bard or if I go uh, gunslinger. That's for another time. That's for that's for focusing deep on an individual character. And I feel like now, as we have everyone together, we can talk about the whole game and how much we want uh, a level up. Yeah, you should probably want level up. Yeah, you should all just yeah. sort of pile on on Kyle so he feels a great deal of peer pressure. So, now I'm going to ask for you to drop as much hard, like, drop a Macho Man Randy Savage elbow drop on Kyle of why we should be leveling up now. Go. But I'll do you one better. Mm-hmm. Birthday next week. You guys enjoy a level up. Yay. Uh, yay. For those of us who have leveled up already, does that mean we're level nine? No. I think that, it should how be. That works? Oh, it okay. seems like it to me. So. I mean, how numbers work. <clears throat> so. so now my question is, does does event think Tati should multi-class? Ooh. Do what? Do yes. what? Yes. I'm guessing I'm open for suggestions. <laughs> I am open for suggestions. So. But I want you to know, she feels a whole lot of rage going on right now. Is she going to join Which? Saigon? Are you going to fuck? No, 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 I no, have no. very good suggestion. <laughs> Mechanically, suggestion it'll work. Is, yes. Yes, yes. Whatever you multi multi-classing wins every time. It does. Vengeance Paladin. <laughs> I can see that. Wait, how would that work? Actually, or is to overlap, but we would both benefit uh, uh, from the max. So one good thing, if one of us was down, mm-hmm. the person, everyone would still get the aura and the person making death saving throws gets that to their death saving throw. Hey, I like that. Yes, but, I mean, that, things are that's more holy. six levels away, so hold your horses. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a are, are few things more holy to broken people than vengeance? Oh, I love vengeance. Everybody she should feel that. She does feel pretty. Ari's she had she already felt pretty vengeful. Oh. I don't know, man. I see, like. <laughs> Blood you could also hunters. go like weirdly assassin rogue. You could go deep into blood hunter. Blood hunter is actually a really hard one to multi class. Yeah, it's it's hard because you're a deck no. you're a deck based character and like all the cool things we'd want you to multi class into are all strength based. Uh, paladins can do decks. I mean, I think the multi class requirement is a thirteen strength. She she. Strong too, though. But I know, I haven't seen have she's, got a, she's got a plus two to her strength. Oh, easy. Uh, so I mean, you're level eight now. You can just bump that up to a thirteen. The thing is, though, is so multi ability dependent. If she goes paladin, 
No. Yeah, what's your I thought charisma is already uh, her blood charisma. hunter. Her charisma is oh. <laughs> <Blood hunter. laughs> I'm not charismatic. I'm just a bitch. My bad. Uh, she bad. actually has high intelligence. If anything, she would go artificer. I think would be cool. Ooh. She has like guns. Really seem like her though. That Just like guns, better. and I have guns, so I like that. Fun list of all the bard colleges I might be able to join now, because I haven't looked at the new rules at all. <laughs> And don't really care. I just want someone to send me a list of all the bard colleges I could do. Because if I get a level up, I could go fighter or I could get a bard college. I told you, the three that probably fit best are... Tragedy. Tragedy, Whispers, and if Swords works the same way as it does in Baldur's Gate 3, which you know, I don't You know, I'm not, I'm not feeling Swords from what I saw on it. Whispers, I like, but I don't feel like Ari is so full of subterfuge. And secrets. So, Secrets, you know, like I, I would love that, but I don't really feel like that's actually his vibe. He was never really I. Mm. Oh, well, no, you want a, a spy master? Tragic. I'll make you a spy master, but Ari ain't him. I mean, a tragedy bar just screams though. Screams, sorry. It screams. Like, just tragedy lost, bar, lost, scream, lost, Ari. Lost Ortega. You guys got to hear this fucking song. Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> drop it in the chat. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop it. Those who wish to listen, listen. Onto the when it comes in the game and Kyle plays it, just acts fucking surprised. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna be so surprised. Is it bad that I'm just sitting here staring at my new character? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Niall. It is bad. I'm a song, and you're so moved on to the next thing. Enjoy what you've done and be in the moment, douche. Yeah. I would uh, feel less bad though about. Kyle, do you want a song or not? Song, which I'm about to drop into the chat. Close your next character sheet. Be present in Ortega's demise. It's the only way you get to hear the song. I'll we'll hear the song. I'm around to listen to it. Okay, and shut off your mic for a minute. Here's here here it is. Oh, are we are we actually just like playing it? Chat. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm looking at. Then why did I turn off my mic? <laughs> oh, I guess I guess headphones would be the more thing. You're not allowed to listen to it. Let's do it. I'm not the boss of you. I'm not listening to it currently. No, you're not gonna listen to it. Okay. There, and and Nile, I'm just it? giving you. I'm just giving you a hard time because I'm mad that Ortega died. <laughs> oh my goodness. But there's your song. Yeah. But question yeah, is it. Are you bringing in a new permanent character? Is this one going to last a year and die too? Is it a rescue mission for Ortega and then Ortega's back? Or is it new character? It's, not a, it's a good question. It is not a for a rescue mission character. Okay. Oh. So you we got some good uh, some good fan questions coming in, so that's good. We'll make sure we answer them. We do. I've been reading them. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we, fan questions we, do, we do have some fan questions coming in. Uh, it's in just in the fan zone chat. Um, but yeah, there's some fan questions. <laughs> um, I'm looking I love, I have to say, I love watching two adult men have a conversation in a Discord server and they end every single message with LOL. To me, that is the of comedy. I don't know why, but watching that back and forth of just like LOL, 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 I'm like, neither of you are having a conversation. It just blows my mind. Anyways. Ugh. Comedy. I wonder if maybe would benefit from making a uh, like if I were to look into very specific homebrew classes for you to go to college. <laughs> Tragedy. tragedy don't yeah tragedy's amazing like in its critical role like it fits yeah, i think i i feel like tragedy is like have you read it like do you want I me to build it to you? yeah no I, I i will i would love for you to i have read it a long time ago and i know when i was doing initial builds in the different ways it could go when i thought about orville peck and where i wanted to build this character from and if I get, I'm like, tragedy is going to be woven into he, he wants to do poppy numbers. He wants to do some things that are fast and fun, but he's too sad to just a boy. 
he's just a sad gay cowboy and he's that it's just who he is yeah I mean there's always like the new glamour being glamour man he's not he hasn't he's not glamorous he's never been happy enough no. <laughs> to, to consider glamour and uh, eloquence i mean you're pretty like i mean you said you're a gay cowboy like that's pretty eloquent <laughs> but i i think tragedy is is amazing i mean like you know what? I, yeah I, if i'm gonna go eloquence i've got a whole other character who can talk like that and be the yeah. be an eloquent bard i don't want to shoehorn ari that direction Really, right? That tragedy is the way to go, Kyle. I agree. That's where you end up. I think that's. I think that's the spot for him. Yeah. And I love what comes with it. Well, being able to regain bardic inspiration on a natural one on anything is unreal. Like that's. It's anything. amazing, and I do love. I do love when my. I like buffing the party. Like I, I came into this game as a as a cleric. Um. So I really like when my bard gets to, to buff. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is nice to have too, just making it a charisma save instead and doing some extra damage. Like it's, it, it's screams. It's sorry. It really does. And it just, it gets, it just gets better. And like the more you into it, it just gets better. And um, yeah, I go, go tragedy. Just go try. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, that's where we're going. I might go gunslinger. Vegetables after that. Really need to get into a school. I'll, I'll leave that up to you as and, to how that goes. I'm not sure if it's like a letter I get from people. I'm like, we can discuss it because I have a ton of ideas of how I could find myself going through that process in a storyline anchored way. I've got tons of ideas. Um, we discuss that offline. My, my general rule of thumb when I'm making a character um, is you do up to ASI and then on a multi-class, your next level is go until ASI, right? So what is ASI? What does that mean? Ability score or feat. Uh, ASI, level four, six, eight, and fear fighter and level four, eight. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, the way that that offsets is like it's kind of like that milestone where it's like, OK, I've just got my feet. Now I'm, I'm good. Now I want to focus and use that feet and then level up in something else than like level five. For example, that's when you sure. class and then you go from five to um, where I'm at now, seven, seven. seven and you I've done two classes now in my multi class. Yeah. So now, I mean, ideally you would do one more level in Bard after yeah. you're level eight. So when you get to level nine, your ninth will Bard getting that ability score increase for your Bard. And then you can switch back to fighter and continue going on. That way you're just you're maximizing your feats, especially um, with, with how you are right now. Um, I like I personally would have because you're you're a fighter five. I would have gone to fighter six to get that extra ability score increase and then go up to the three in the Bardic College. Well, I can do that or now I can choose yeah. bar, I can choose Bard three or I can choose Fighter uh, six. Fighter That's where six. I'm at. Fighter six is going to give you a lot of things too. like don't get me wrong. Like it's there's a lot to be had with Fighter six. You get the ability to feel like though if we're leveling up now. Storyline wise, is there a better time for Ari to become a tragic bard than after Ortega dies? It's, it's a perfect time. It's a perfect time. It's really perfect. So I think, to be honest, I think I'd rather do a storyline focused advancement at this point yeah. than a, a mechanically balanced development, which I'm sure will eventually get me killed. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but but I think that this tragedy piece really is is where it is is where it's at. Um, I do know that there are some things that, for Anna at least, when it comes to leveling up, you know, there's like I even said wizard. Like wizard be a good idea because she's got that intelligence. She could go blade sing. Yeah. Alice, what's Alice going to do? Oh, we all know Talis Alice is just going to full on warlock for the rest of the game. I'm it's a problem. <laughs> You're not using I'm not any of your warlock stuff. I use warlock stuff. Oh, I should totally do wizard. Blade singer, get a, get wizard. a spell book. Take of, like ritual spells as opposed to like or like spells that like don't need 
materials and stuff so that. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. We're getting like a gajillion questions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, okay. So while, you know what, while we all, while we all do our leveling up, um, I definitely, like I said, Ashley, I, I think Blade Singer Wizard is probably a really cool idea. And like, it kind of fits thematically. Like you're getting more of this magical, you know, the, the runes from your dad and being in the Fae, like you're, you're, yeah, it, it's a good transition. I think if you wanted to do it, I wouldn't, I'm not going to do, but uh, that was my second pick. Yeah, I'm I like Blade Singer Wizard. Um, I've never really played them, but I know that uh, it gets thrown out a lot. Oh, um, I saw a TikTok on um, how to absolutely break a Burning Wizard multi-class. Oh, oh, I saw by that. going by going all decks <coughs> and intelligence singing and having a, a static AC of 24. Too much. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Okay. Then you can also get like Nothing your... about being a wizard, I will need lots of help. Oh, Again, I also know nothing spell. about a freaking... We'll talk. We'll talk after. But yeah, yeah, we definitely, we could definitely talk. I'm going to hold off on leveling up so we can talk after. Um... I'm sure we're going to get into answering questions for everyone. Just hold off on anything directed towards me for now. I need to switch my laundry over. I'll be back in like five minutes. And all right, I'm just I'm writing down the questions so I can just ask them without being in the. Uh, oh, my God, I'm going to freak out. Uh, oh, we got one for Niall. Uh, I love questions, although I feel like the questions that are directed to me are like a two second answer. Yeah. I've got 10 minutes. I was just flashing. So these the questions camera. I might not ask just because we could always put them in an origins story. Um, True. Like, I felt like just responding in the chat. To, yes, using 2024 rules. Because a couple of are for sure. I don't know if we all are or not. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... Oh, sorry, I read one of the questions. <laughs> yeah. Made me laugh. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm sure we'll get more, but I got I got a couple written down. So there's a couple that I'm I'm just gonna answer straight up right now, um, and it's related to Saigon. Um, the questions are is Saigon origins, um, and if it have anything to do with Talus. Um, in terms of Talus's. Um, origin with Saigon. She can say that if she wants to say that. Um, but if we get a Saigon origins, uh, the answer is no. There's going to be no origins for any um, deity or patron. If we do an origin, it's going to it's not going to be an origin. It's going to be um, it, it, like I character uh, level 21 shot to, to take them down. They, I don't I've already in, in the first campaign, I've, I've done a lot of role play with where those characters had come from anyways that it's at this point they're just there's no reason to do it and i don't i don't want to waste an episode doing that especially since like i mean if somebody else wants to end up doing it and, and takes on the stuff that i've written that's fine but i'm not i'm not gonna do it um and then are we using 2024 rules yeah some of uh, some of us are um and and we're gonna slowly make that transition as more classes and races become available um and i do plan on using dnd beyond for those uh, maps when they become available as well so that's gonna answer some other questions for that and um yeah so uh we can do uh since I think we actually have this question answered, but since uh, since Niall, you're here, uh, the question that was directed to you was, when you rage, do you act upon the rages? I don't exactly know what that what that means. Okay. Well, I think he was wondering if, like, why Ortega doesn't like get over the top angry or or like he doesn't calm down after the rage, and his rage was more his primal ability like is is a, like it was just like honing his natural abilities um obviously like the fey wild bit of growing super big um was just part of the being bigger faster stronger 
vibe that he was West when with his original deal. Um, but yeah, it was more bringing in like his more animalistic instincts as opposed to a, a rage and being angry. Um, obviously, like a couple of episodes, he got angry. Um, I moved away from that just because I wanted to try something different with rage than just being the big bad angry guy. The big bad angry. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I appreciate it. And, yeah. And, and I mean, he had a 13 intelligence. So, like, he wasn't the big bad angry guy either. So, like, trying to use that as, like, he had skills other than being, right? Like, he had a lot of good skills that were nature and survival and stuff like that that he could use as as more of like a hunter aspect than than um yeah and and like i think <laughs> I, I think even just from like role play perspective like just having a big dumb barbarian brute and, and go like ragey and crazy like it's been done yeah it's, it's been done so many times and it's been done and really the the best use of that type of character is for comedic effect yeah. and me that's more of a one shot character type atmosphere than a campaign based character yeah I agree a percent um, obviously I'm going to be releasing this episode um, uh, this fireside after um, <laughs> but uh, I mean the we'll never get that big drum brute regardless anyways so <laughs> uh, the other thing the other thing I wanted, that he wanted to ask you is um, do you still want that statue <laughs> if you guys ever get um, uh, a, a castle or whatever and that's it's um, funny. <laughs> first off I love the new Bastion system. I want to use it. Yeah. I I think it's awesome. Um, as a player, I will always want a statue of my own character somewhere in the world. Um, so yeah. I mean, technically speaking, like it's not Tega that has the statue. It's it's exactly. I mean, you do. Hawk you, has a statue. You have. A I statue. have a statue. I mean, and just the next goal is that Ortega <laughs> will have some form of a monument. It could be something simple and small. It could be even like a chiseled stone little figure that one of their party members remembered him by. Be with that. Long as he's a, a memento than the world. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure there will be something for sure, especially <laughs> when you guys get back into the material plane. Someone's going to do something. I know that much. Uh, this question's for Ari. Um, will you ever sing on stream? And I think we can actually answer that. Like, we've already answered. Like, you've done it. We've tried. It just doesn't work really well, <laughs> is the problem. Or at least. I mean, I've got this new microphone. I could try it now, see if it works. But um, sounding good. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Yeah, the new mic. Give me a good. It's it's more. Give so me a moment, friends. It's more so like music, like instruments getting picked up. But like you, he has like played um, like in the early episodes. He would be playing his actual ukulele, um, and it just it wouldn't sound good. So it, while it sounded good for us while we we're listening to it, um, the, the recording it just isn't great. Um, he's made a couple. Um, like anecdotes in and in, in, in lines in, in in song format, especially when he's using bardic inspiration. I, like I think it was like the last episode that we recorded and haven't put out yet. I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. Also, and and I've I've been sending stuff to you um, either in advance or after the game, yeah. and hoping that maybe we can like do in a properly recorded version. But let's see if this works. Yeah, see, it doesn't work. See, it doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. So, doesn't work. I would, I like, I'm, I'm not against, you know, making songs like really quickly and then and I, I can edit them after. But like in the moment, it's so difficult. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I think I've got like a bunch of songs ready that I can either have, um, I'll just be like, Kyle, insert song here, and I'll generally just like say it in the space with something for you to insert. But um, yeah, yeah. 
whoever question. Yeah, thank you. I would. I will be doing some bargain inspiration stuff that is more musical. We're just in post production because doing it live is a big old pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, Lee. Let's talk about. What? Wake up, Lee. Let's talk about um huh? Let, let's talk about let's talk about Parrish for a second. So the question is um like it, what was your um origin choice for being a, a cleric of the Raven Queen? Uh very good question. I know I've talked about this uh, at a fireside. I think unrecorded with the cast, but with Parrish I very much wanted to explore uh, coping with loss and coping with death. Um, lost people in my life. Um, some recently, some from my teen years. And I thought that it would just be... I had always kind of been curious about playing a cleric of... In a flight. Uh, the more of the, like, helping people with the transition... Um, both the person who maybe I would be administering you know, the medicine that stopped their heart because they were not going to get better. Maybe I was the battlefield field cleric deciding where the resources were going. And maybe it was to... Anyways, all that to say, this came out... This idea had before Free Run Beyond Journey's End came out. And it's a very similar thing where I chose an elf to be a very long-lived race to kind of truly have to have dealt with this. A uh, small pitch for free and beyond journey's end, uh, where uh, Elf has outlived their adventuring companions and is finding ways to still get with people. And I thought that was a really interesting space to be in, aside from this kind of cleric idea I'd had. So it was an opportunity to blend both of those and have, you know, more interesting to me than the Raven Queen, who's just a really rad, you know, critical role feature and had a lot of support mechanically. He thought it was cool about, like, why is he no longer really on that path? And so talking with Kyle about being more or less from a halfling village, living hundreds of years there, and why he is so filled with, like, light and life and loves and laughs and music and uh, food. Um, and that was, uh, that was a really rewarding part of it and still continues to be a rewarding part of it in the everybody dies. <laughs> going to go through life focused on that and focused on the loss you're really not doing justice to what you've you've got so yeah fun to explore and of course we had the schism with the raven queen which uh was one of my favorite episodes we've done yes that was oh man so good i love i love doing deity work and and having having something with that much power like the raven queen has more power than saigon has as much power as avandra does you know like it's it, it's so much fun because it's like everyone wants like oh yeah we just you know we'll just get what we want but like gods are not fun to mess around with <laughs> I, I do i have been waiting on the line to drop at some point and i thought it was going to happen in this last episode Someone's like, who think you're messing with? I'm a, you know, patron of such and such. And be like, lady, look, I said no Raven Queen and I'm still here. Like you are, you, you have no power here. Enjoy that Alice has a collection with the Raven Queen. Oh. That was that, 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 those memories. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about those in, in a, in a minute. Um, Oh, I like Lee and I have been talking about what his or like for the most part, the broken origins I have written with no input from two just based on what we've talked about is. But um, for Ari's and for Lee's uh, Arbish's, there has been input um, from these people, from these guys. So um it will it will be a little bit different, but we're going to be exploring a lot of the um, the, the the inner trials of of Parrish and his origins. And um, Ari's is just going to be fun. Um, I'm not going to spoil either of that. I'm just saying it's there's components to look out for um, specifically. Yeah. Um, 
So I would have totally given input on Ortega's, but I didn't. I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, and 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 Talus didn't even know it was happening. <laughs> I was just nuts. Um, speaking of Talus, oh. there there is the question: Why you decided to choose Saigon as your patron? Now we don't have to answer that question, but you can give um, you know a little bit. Yes, you yeah. do. You have to answer the question. You have to answer it fully, <laughs> entirely. That's how the rules work. Answer the question fully. Thank you. <laughs> so I think the tricky question, because I think we've been kind of dancing around this for uh, 20 episodes now. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, um, yeah, it's, a, it's really fun for me as a player because I kind of get to like... Um, having knowledge that other people don't have, which is kind of fun. But, um, yeah, I think there's been some ambiguous kind of hints to what happened, but um, what I'll say is Talus so much choose Saigon as in a life raft and desperately clinging to it because it was the only thing there. Um, John appeared to Talus in the deepest, darkest pit of her life. And because Talus was young and desperate and afraid, she made a deal and would mail again. It's a, a, a definitely a cool place to work. I think often we see warlocks as these kind of like um, devious, charismatic, kind of scheming characters. And I think there's a little bit of that for Talus, but it's also fun to play her as this like young, kind of naive character who... It, He's the best in her patron and has a patron who's willing to exploit that. Um, it's it's a very, very fun dynamic to play with, and I've enjoyed it a lot. But I would say that Talos didn't choose Saigon, but ended up in this place. And I don't know, she's, she's happy. <laughs> she's happy. <laughs> Is there anything that's happened to Talis in her journey so far that would make her change her belief in Saigon? Uh, I... <coughs> I know, that's fine. Yeah, it could Probably be. hasn't happened yet. I think I... there... Right, no, you can, yeah, oh, you can answer, go ahead. Say is, honestly, I think the answer is no. The only thing that has kind of trickled in with a little bit of doubt is her asking Talus to have others sign this contract. I think it put a position where Talus has always found this like safety and comfort in knowing that she was dealing with somebody on an individual level that no matter what happened it was nobody else's no one's getting caught in the crossfire she could very clearly say this is my you know burden to bear this is my deal to make these are my conditions to meet and now that there's this uh, hint of involving other people and having you know there be consequences in that sense I think that's an uncomfortable place for her and I think it's yeah, she doesn't love that. <laughs> it's very much like Tatiana and that she doesn't want to share. It's yeah, I, I, that's I, what it boils down to. I think so. I think it it's I think she does see so much of it as like this like positive um like friendly, almost like familial at times relationship that now it's like, oh yeah, I guess other people can do that. And it like just feels off. It feels not right of like, well, 
Yeah, but I mean, I thought we were just doing this because we're hanging out and being friends. <laughs> I thought we were vibing, bro. Like, do, do, I thought we were just hanging out. <laughs> is there any part of that that has made Talus, even if an instinctual knee jerk, like, no, I don't want other people to be in this position, not just because, oh, it's mine, but, uh, oh, they shouldn't be in this position, and I want to look no further internally to find out why I think it's a bad place to be. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. The The moment that she she asked, um, the moment that she asked Saigon to, to help save Parrish, it was like that was the like alarm in the back of her head of like no matter what happens Parrish cannot hold this debt this is not his to have this is mine to have and it wasn't like a conscious like and this is very transactional and she's obviously exploiting me and I'm being manipulated it was very much like that yeah that knee jerk instinctive like no, no 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 that's not for him this is for me I'm making a decision I'm asking for something I'm taking a big risk and that's for that's for me there so it's definitely creeping up in the background I think consciously and in her her emotional brain she <coughs> is still in this state of like that can do no wrong would do anything for her I'm the, I'm the problem and I am constantly climbing back up to Saigon's level um like what brings hell up? Like is what, like, I I don't know what, where to hook in with her where she can realize who she is outside of this thing. Um, maybe just cutting to the end of the entire story, which isn't probably cool. But uh, Talus's love for Saigon is different than how I've seen warlocks played. Lots of different ways to play warlocks. All of them awesome. <laughs> This is different and heartbreaking, especially because you don't actually maximize the mechanical value of the Warlock class. Yeah. And this is what I got to ask. Why doesn't Warlock Talus play like a Warlock? I will say on a level it's because warlock lily <laughs> doesn't know how to use the full potential of a warlock i just don't think i'm that like um that kind of player it's not something that i'm very good at uh utilizing anytime somebody does interest something interesting with a character or their class or their multi-class i'm like this is fascinating <laughs> I never would have seen this coming. I'm just like, um, like so in the experience that like I, I, it's not really what I do it for. I'm much more of like um, how do, how does my character sheet support the story that I'm telling with a character and and facilitate cool interactions with the other characters that I'm playing with. That's so like on a awesome, mechanical though. level. <laughs> that's what I'll say. But even hearing that, like that's how character first you are that's being character first to such a degree yeah. so so then what does that mean for Talis moving forward then if she's getting closer to Saigon eventually like where's the reciprocity where's the is, I'm worried about is when Talis finds out how powerful she is with Saigon how much deeper does that rabbit hole go I'm gonna go here to you guys just so that you all are aware. I'm gonna see you before bed and I go to Owen Sound tomorrow for a doctor's appointment, so. I'll be nice rest, my guy. Cheers and be well. Oh, good friend. Mm -hmm. You didn't That's him. I didn't say right this second. No, good oh, idea. I, oh, no, like, I, I, th I thought he was saying now, my bad. <laughs> just like, if there's any other question or. There's nothing questions that you. <coughs> Sorry, there's nothing specifically for you, uh, Niall, um, other than uh, the ones that were like for all of us. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'll answer one question that we have. Uh, or open up to the party if they've got questions. 
before I head out. We can, we can, we can do that. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then we'll, we'll, we'll end off with, uh, cause there's a question for Tatiana and then there's a question for me and then a question for all of us. So, um, yeah, we'll open it up to you guys to ask questions for each other for a little bit. Maybe specifically to, to, to Niall if he uh, has to go. Uh, and, and refrain from anything for Tatiana yet. Uh, I have a question for now. I've got a question for now. Uh, you go first, Lily. Okay, <laughs> my question's really important, okay? I need you just seriously, okay? I need you to take this seriously, Niall, because I don't want to answer, like, I don't want to ask a question if you're not ready, Okay. First question, get a serious answer. Great. This is serious, so lock in. Okay, ready? Yes. My question is, hey, no. what class is your new character? I have a guess. Yes. I'm going to say no until it comes in. Oh. Get out of here. Hey, that, that question wasn't for you. You don't have to be locked in. I, I, I feel like you don't get a vote here. Someone, someone, shut up the DM. Hey, Niall, uh, I believe Lily asked you a question. I'm just wondering if you're a polite person or a rude person. I answered all my questions. Polite questions, uh, Niall. Uh, there's a cup of shut up over there. Just grab a <laughs> grab a sip. And Niall, uh, someone asked you a question. Not clear. Oh my god. I'll I'll narrow have down a two, three classes. Great. He's going to be a sorcerer. I, I have a question for Niall before he takes off. How, how could you do that to Tati? <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> 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 my very question, my question was going to be how fucking could you? <laughs> same, basically, the same question. But when it comes to Josh, very, very easily. <laughs> um, it was really, it, it was just a, a, how to propel and the party's own stories forward. So, where we're like, I don't know, 25 sessions in, like most characters are with each other what happens when one there that song about missing ortega in the chat did anyone listen to it and he's not really gone it's true well i don't know i don't know we'll see what happens yeah and um i honestly i was expecting um I, like, I would like I, I, I said at the end of the episode, but we didn't record it. I was getting like waterworks and like a Han Solo moment between the two of them. To me. No. No, no, no. didn't say shit to me. Uh, I want to point that out. You dickhead. Um. What well, they had already basically said it to each other. He was more concerned about making sure the rest of the party got her right fate wild. And her in the Feywild and all. And also, how do we get out of the Feywild and now? <laughs> oh, gee, I don't know. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, and and to go uh, with Lee's thing of not telling the party, he may not have told the entire party, but he was pretty adamant with Ari that he did not want to go to the Fey. He was very very scared of the Fey. And then drags me through a portal. Just one that I out. believe through was the word used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we there go into the portal. Pretty bearder, like it was through a barricade in wrestling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Objectively, yeah. it was better than the alternative, which was to put you. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Hair, her unbeating heart, out her chest. I'll touch you. This way. Again. Best acting skills next game. I did for you. I did to see you one up, Lee. Do you think that will ever happen? But sure, it you'll will. Give it your best damn no. shot. Be oh. ever good in reflection of all of you. Oh. <laughs> I am going to give it my damn shot. So is beautiful. Right. I, um, I thought 
I was only doing the recap. No, she's doing the recap, but like to seem like there's gonna be words had. <laughs> I'm kind of curious how Dan would recap that episode. <laughs> We just nope, wanted nope, to come nope, up nope. next to she Tatiana much, nope. and like let her nope. let her vent for a minute and then sing the song to with her or like to, like not to her but like oh you two are gonna his solve. his, his response to her will be the song and I hope that's what gets us on the same page. Oh my god, guys are crazy. All right, team, I'm going to go have a Monday morning tomorrow, and you guys are lovely, and I love you all very, very much. But I have to... Let's let's do one question all together really quickly, because I actually... I think this would be a really fun question to answer. Uh, Okay, sure, yeah, that sounds great. Oh, drop (laughs) tonight, sorry. The person... (laughs) Mary kill the characters. The person? Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's a big ask. Date Mary kill the party? Oh. Yeah. The terrible fast. I got my answer. <laughs> no, I want to know. <laughs> so I'll go. I can go first here while you guys think about it, and I will gladly sacrifice my entire my entire social capital with this community. <laughs> um, I would. Would Wait, Josh? Josh, I think it would be no. It would be Josh. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. Josh. I, what would Josh? Uh, to be honest, they're not that different. <laughs> I think it's the same answer. I would eight. Because I think that would be a fun adventure. Kill Ortega. I'm sorry, Holmes, but like, a you already died. B, it's a lot. This is just not. It's a lot of rigidity. It's a lot of not. It's a lot of not. Uh, it's a lot. I would probably marry Parish. And oh, um, yeah, that's if it, my choice is there. Niall, I am sorry for the murder. But considering you've killed me like five times in D and D proper, I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Here we go. Kill her. <laughs> Sticks and stones. Tell us, Mary Tati. Uh, yeah, I think I saw that one coming. <laughs> Who are you gonna kill, Ari? Ari. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why would I kill her? Okay. Just look after me. Get me set. For killing parishes, he's like 90% of the way there, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's already almost way out. You mean like, yeah. shove. Uh, uh, but. You got me in. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have reasons. Date. Not a lot of reasons. He's from Tempestuous. Uh, think kill Ortega. Look, it's because I didn't want to kill the other two. Yeah. Think Mary Parish. Uh, uh, sorry, Parish marrying Parish, but. A hundred percent. I mean, I'm you guys don't know. Most marriage material of the parish has been married several times already. Nobody. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I love I'm, it. I'm excited for everybody to kill Ortega. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Well, I mean, admittedly, it is a bit easier because he did just die. So, <laughs> okay, so Lily or Ashley, who's who's up next? Oh God! Right. Um, yeah. obviously, date because Avenger, great with the Avenger. Clearly, Mary Tati because she's just great. I feel character. like the marrying ourselves um, motif might need to change. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Ari. I would. Kill you because you've shot me twice. Three times. Three times three Thank times? you, Parrish. I think it's been three yeah. times. Really yeah. glad you keep track. And because oh, yeah. I've either been mind controlled or she's been a demon monster. Still got me. And no I point was like, let, let's not late this with but, like. But I mean, see what I've done to you, Josh? See what I've done to you? Side, you get something, whereas Ortega gets nothing because he's dead to me. <laughs> Ortega gets you, you, don't, go. you don't need to, to do the kill of Ortega because Ortega has just nope. he's gone already. He's, he's so he's dead, dead to her already. 
I had named Parrish best friend. Bestie. Oh, he got, he got had something. He never Ugh, okay. Is this Lily or Talis? This Lily. Speaking for Lily, Lily would date Tatiana, obviously. I mean, have I not made it clear? <laughs> and then Lily would marry Talis, obviously. But also, I would marry Ari and have a fun little lavender situation going on. We would, it would be very, we would have happy life, I think. Yeah, it would be adventure filled. Yeah. Kill. I mean, he's already dead, so I don't. It's the job is done for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, actually, I would kill. Ah. I'm here for that. That guy should die. That guy sucks. Let's throw that one out there. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I do think that maybe at some point, if we have the opportunity to opportunity to either over a series of like one shots or people being ill or whatever, I think we should hunt Tom Cruise. I think we yeah, should I hunt guess. him like a great white whale. And uh, it's like, famously know, goes pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I was about to say like turn turn it around a little bit. But um, yeah, no, maybe maybe a single minded obsession, as I've learned from such tales, ends poorly. Love you all. I'm heading up. Good night. It's me too. Um, this 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 Mary this Mary. Uh, it was Mary date kill. Yeah, I made it a yep. little more PG than what it should be. It's a little more PG. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah. Sorry, okay. No, guys. I'm sorry. I uh, a little me at seven thirty in the morning uh, on the East Coast. So. Yeah, guys, yeah. you're lovely. Um, and this has been highlighted of my weekend. So thanks Aww. so much for all hanging out. You guys are great. And I, by the way, had a great weekend. Uh, so <laughs> let, let, let tell you more about it. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. And I will chat with you again soon. Friends. Bye. Yeah. So clearly, you? Ari and Talis are like the very eligible ones. Yeah, apparently. Tati and Parrish are the, all right, I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> and Ortega, well, I got a gun, so. <laughs> let's, just, let's just kill him. It's fine. I hope it's very clear that I would not be settling down. Just to be Sorry, I missed Talis' answer. I mean, uh, Tatiana. I just think. We're dating now. I think we'd get along. <laughs> I think I would have a fun time. I think she would have a fun time. We both, it would be good. Then we would have a very mealy benefit of relationship. It would be great. <laughs> awesome. Cal looks like a snack now, so. I hope you know. <laughs> um, want a letter? Do we want to do a couple more questions? Because there's a few more. If people were down, I'm around forever. Okay, two questions for Tatiana. We, we held off for you. Uh, question number one is: um, Miniature dragon doing? Do you have a name for it yet? What's the gender? Yes. Was a coin for gender. It's a sheep. It's a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. And she is my little nightmare because she was a nightmare to get, and it just seemed fitting. So yeah, she's just my little nightmare. And I've thrown to a pile of gold to roll around, but that's about it. There's been much shenanigans with her. As soon as you said nightmare, I was like. <gasps> <laughs> I wrote it down in the margin of my notebook. I was like taking notes on the story or whatever, and then I was like, "Also, you guys are never gonna believe it, but the dragon is out." I was like very excited. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is, um, it's it's a unique question because um, you're you're basically playing a legacy character in this campaign. To play as a character, what would you have played? Ooh. Oh my god, I have so many characters made. Not that, like, not for this. I think T Tati is going to ride it out until she's forcibly killed in this campaign, but I have so many. Let me list them off for you. Just give us, like, so. three. top three. <laughs> top, top three? Okay. I gotta pull them up in my specs. Um, is 
but I haven't named her, but she's a wizard and she has a wonderful magical bag of holding. Kyle and I have talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't go into any details about that because one, still in the works. Is she's it a mimic? Be a whole lot of fun. She is not a mimic. No, it's the bag of holding. Uh, a mimic. <laughs> it might be. No, no. You don't know. No, that would be fun. Mm. No, Kyle. No. There is an officer tabaxi named Buttons oh. that I really want to play. And he has a mechanical mouse that she calls Cheddar. Um, not dark enough for this campaign. And I have a moon druid that I really want to play. Um, Half elf and his Alula. <laughs> Three of those. The wizard is still in the making. I want to answer the same question. If is permissible. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely not. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's sure. <laughs> right. oh, yeah. Cap- Captain's orders. Um, to play a barbarian rogue so much and I just love the class combination. I mean, that's what um, Zenith Skyrender was, though he was 18 swashbuckler, but I would probably do um, in split. Works a little different now that grapple is different and I can't just stack athletics and make everyone lay down and get hit. But I really love the like tortle old pirate Waiting for his opportunity and tackle someone in the water and keep them grappled while they drown and he can like, well, I got another hour down here. Uh, I've really wanted to do a bard of dance, the new priest class that is like partial monk. Um, they dig in unarmed characters without doing unarmed characters. And I've always, I've also, similar to both of those, wanted to play a fighter barbarian who used unarmed. And it was make a monk, the monk, and it's like the dropout of the monk school. Uh, who, like, okay, as artist, is probably not the stat. It's definitely constitution because you're great at dodging until you get gassed. And it's all about the, like, closest you can be and most efficient you can be. And I think that's more con than wisdom. But uh, I, I really want to do, like, a battle master control um you know disarming people field um tactical what's called switch where you can give the ac to someone or get your own Mm -hmm. um yeah i thought it was a really fun character that's one i've been playing with for a while in my head um kind of answers the other question that i had for you lee um which Mm. is um is there a weapon like fit for you and i think i mean you technically kind of just answered that Um, i think no i think parish uh in his current iteration um were he to stay a cleric i definitely can see scythe being like get away from the bell flail and be more the reaper himself and we can parish make an attack roll yet but I think he definitely like I I have both grappler and tavern brawler and the unarmed fighting fighting style. So I'm very set up to be an unarmed fighter and I like for Parish a lot. And I think it's amazing that wild magic searches for it. two of his spells, the two that he cast both time uh, heat metal and everyone had to drop their weapons. And he very much could be like, I can no, no weapons. Um, That's so <laughs> it worked out and I very much to his character. He'll never have a weapon as he currently is. If Kyle throws something at me or if he dies and has to come back, having made deal with the Raven Queen, those two, which I don't think he would right now. <laughs> See him coming back as a warlock. Um, <laughs> No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I can I can see him coming back as uh, a book, mm, but we'll see. I don't know. Definitely, uh, definitely a sword, sword and board. If he came back, there's a couple of things that it's like kind of for the full cast. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask them. But um, we're the full cast. You got. You are. Mm. Actually, we can we can we can toss this one out. Who luckiest and who is the unluckiest dice roller so far? 
Oh. <laughs> Luck really handsome. swings. I've had some good nights. Mm -hmm. I was depends on what part of the campaign we're talking about. Like the beginning, I remember Talus not being able to succeed on an Eldritch Blast for the longest time. Yeah. And then, but now it's like boom, 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 right? I don't know. I, we all have. This is the unluckiest roller. I really do. I I feel that sometimes as well. <laughs> there was, I don't remember if it was the session before last or the one before that, but there was one session where I literally couldn't roll above like a seven and it was like every deck, it was like, that's a failure, that's a failure, that's a failure. And it didn't like really feel like it changed much like narratively or anything. But like the whole time I was sitting there like, what's happening? <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like uh, I think Parrish has rolled very well on skill checks and attack rolls and flopped his saves yeah. in like real important moments so often. Yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard that. to figure out who the luckiest one is. I think yeah. I think in terms of luck for for D and D, you're you're either on or you're doing like clutch things. Yeah. You're a halfling, or you're <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. There's that. Uh, yeah. I I think more so the clutch saves that then I think we. In my opinion, Parrish, probably the luckier one. Because he's pulled mm. some stuff out that have been so clutch and so yeah. Um, I think that's I think that'd be the luckiest bit. Cause I don't think there's such thing as uh, like a luck of the dice, sure, but most more times <laughs> than not, you're you're looking at your failures than you are at your natural twenties. I feel like it's really cool to have Parrish as a character who's like, don't forget your plus four. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> my whole job is cast plus bless, four. remind people about aura and bless bonus. Yeah, I love it. I don't like a, it's like a fun little treat. Every time I do something, it's like, oh, Parrish is here. How exciting. The <laughs> uh, so, job of a pound. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about, um... Does anyone have any hunches who the big bad end game is? I already know. No. Here that it's Talus's patron. <laughs> uh, she's actually going to be a secret um, good one. <laughs> I'm going to burn her house down. I don't <laughs> like. Pega? I, okay. I, I actually know who it is. I know who it is. Okay. You guys, oh, really? what? Thought, you think I'm gonna, gonna give it away that easy? Oh, uh, it's a secret that only I have. Kyle doesn't even know who it is, but me, mm -hmm. I do know. Yeah, I have yeah. no idea. I've... Then, <laughs> I mean, we, obviously, we could face off with the Ruby. There is Captain um, Bruce. There is Saigon. Um, I don't know who it is. There is that stupid woman who like made us kill Maggie. Nah, she's mid game. Mid game. Yeah. Tell you who I think it is, Kyle, because yeah. I'll tell you, and you're gonna get upset, but I'm right. Okay. What What is the What is the big bad? Mid beer. Rag beer. No. I, I that's need to that's know. my prediction. No. I need to. Yeah, but like, why? What makes me think that? Yeah. Because she loves. A very evil woman is clearly off a rocker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that could be the reason. There could be another reason that's actually really smart and well thought out. Thank you. I, um, I think it's going to be... Oh, sorry, reason, go ahead. My reason, which is smart. It, there has to be something, and maybe this is just my silly little brain that says everything has to have a resolution. <sighs> Why, why are we the temporary champions of Avandra or whatever from the first or three episodes where they were like, surprise, you have to come here. And also there's like a magical artifact that accidentally was here. I bear set us up. I think it's all a hoax. It's all a ruse That's for scapegoats for something. That was my thought. Yeah, quite an interesting turn of events just for like campaign 
continu- like continuity. Ragbeard was like the hero of the first campaign, only to be the I know. second one. <laughs> well, or that makes us the bad guys. You know what I mean? Like if you know, like I think that could be fun. Be an interesting take. We yeah, interesting take for sure. I'm not gonna. Are say we who the, I'm not gonna say who it is. Uh, I think it's going to be Udvara Pak and Lolf or some under dark players. So, <sighs> yeah, I just I feel like it has to be somebody that we've met or heard of or interacted with in some way. So I, I think that makes sense. I think I mean, I keep forgetting like every time before a session, I'm like, OK, let's review what's going on with each of the characters. And every time I get to, oh, yeah, there's just a guy hanging out in Parrish's head. Hmm, maybe we should like attend to that at some point. <laughs> and then we play and I'm like, wow, we're really just this line hoping that that doesn't explode in our faces. <laughs> He's screaming a lot less right now. So that's good. That's good. Well, I had a question about, for you about that. But that can be that can be off uh, offline. Um, yeah, I, I was wondering. Do you like how much I have brought Ara Pak to the forefront of Parish's personality? Um, should I be doing more? Should I be having more little, little side conversations with myself? You're welcome to have as many side conversations as you want. Um, I think we should. The only thing is, is like I we, we've talked about this like offline. Um, there is a difference between the Udvara Pak that's in your brain versus the Udvara Pak that is in Ari's brain. And there's a difference, or sorry, the Udvara Pak that was killed at the end of campaign one. I should say that. There is a difference. And, and it's complicated than just have a good service to this character or, you know, can I talk to this character? Because it's not really... He's a, like... The Udvara Pak that is... In, in yours and Ari's mind is a vacant, distant echo of who Autopoc was. Um, so, like, yes, you can talk to them. They will answer. But their answers are going to be based on, uh, like, their answer would have been, like, 10,000 years ago. That's, that's really, that's I think that's the only answer I could really give you. Um <laughs> I have a fun mini game. Game is everybody um, tells me how names are actually spelt, and I show you the seven thousand different ways that I've spelt them in my notes. <laughs> Cannot, for the life of me, decide how I think Udvarapak should be spelt. Which of those words are words and not words? Oh, I think it's goodness. two names. Which one is the first one and which one is the second one? It's kind of mushed together to be one word. I don't know. It is capital U T apostrophe V A. E? Wait. Oh. U T V A R A. And then it's Pac. P A U K. E A U K. Not even close to how I've been spelling it. That's okay. That's <laughs> I've also been spelling Saigon's name wrong, but I can't really move away from that now because me and her have like this relationship and I've been spelling her name wrong. So I've have just had to pretend that that's Have you been name. spelling it M-O-M-M-Y? M-O-M-M-Y. That's like pretty close. <laughs> yeah. More like W-I-F-E. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. It, well, just for Clarence, it's S-I-G-O-N. <laughs> I've been spelling it with an A. Exciting. Saigon. Like, Saigon. Like S A I. Like, like the. Okay, like yeah. Saigon. Saigon. Yeah. Lily, I don't know if we got your answer on what you would play if not a warlock. Ooh. Mm. Um. That's a good question. When I joined the campaign, I was kind of, but like before I had Talos fleshed out as a character, I was kind of interested in um, playing a class that would help balance the party in some way. And at that time, we weren't super um, on spellcaster. So that's kind of why I went, went in a warlock direction. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, 
obsessed with the dark and the edgy and blah 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 blah. So like as a kid, only interested in rogues, would maybe dip my toe into sorcerer if I wanted to be goth in a magic way kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so that's definitely where I lean. But I there's so many classes that excite me. And again, to be clear. I don't want to play this game. (laughs) The best player. What are you talking about? Oh, rogues are bad. Have never been good. I'm like, "Eh, maybe. What did I say? Rogue? No, rogues are great. Ranger is what I meant. Oh, ranger. And people say rangers are bad. Rangers are good. Monks are no good. Blah, blah, blah. I can't hear you. I'm too busy being obsessed with the aesthetic of being a ranger or a monk. So I'm like, that's exciting. I like that more than I like. Uh, how many dice can I roll in a round? I don't know. I don't know how many dice I'm rolling in a round. I, I mean, just like roll- the dice is super fun. <laughs> um, yes. And doing numbers though so I just say that's cool I like that and then <laughs> that's cool I like that so to answer this question in the most roundabout way possible um, Ranger I think, Rogue I'd I say know. Ranger or Rogue but also my current project right now is making a list of every single class and every single subclass including the fake ones for every single i think it's a list of like 400 or something combinations that i've come up with and i'm just going down the list and doing character pitches for each one so that in any given moment you could name any subclass and i'm like bam i've got a character for that that's my Incredible. current project that i'm working on i think i'm at 80 characters. That's so there. many. That's a lot. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> it is really good. Yeah. So just to kind of get familiar with them because I don't know all of them and then they're like oh how did you forget that you could be oh, a law cleric. I'm like what is it? <laughs> he's, he's literally just a lawyer telling people he's all the laws. Done a character idea for that. So yeah. Yes, all of them. <laughs> all of the time. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, we're coming to about 11 o'clock now. Uh, good time to call it. I think it's a good time to call it. There was a question for me, so I'll just answer it. If I player, and I've been thinking long and hard about it, and told I genuinely think I would have been a wizard. I think of. I would have picked some crazy convoluted wizard. Love it. Uh, and, and it would have been things like kind of out of my realm of expertise. I wouldn't do divination. I've seen how that plays out in campaigns and DMs don't like that. Um, it would have probably just been like some, you know, traditional run of the mill wizard, to be honest. I don't have like a specific subclass. I maybe would have done scribes. I like the idea of scribes wizards, mm-hmm. like a bookworm, mm-hmm. like a librarian. And he probably would have been like from the Cobalt Soul. Um, so that's I think that's kind of what I would have done. As for races, uh, like a species, um, I, don't know, I, I have a I, I love like short races. I always have a thing for short races. I wouldn't do dwarf, um, but I would probably do like a gnome, probably a gnome, a gnome wizard. Ooh. I think those are fun. I don't know. I would have done something just um, half an erasure. Half things, are, half things are, are really good, you know, and um, um, I, I, I have this thing against elves. Sorry. Um, I, I just think that they're You're wrong. wrong. This is my first elf I've ever played. I, I'm not tied to it. I'm saying sorry. This is the elf. 500th elf I've ever played. I love elves. Elves don't get enough representation. I just classically, classically underrepresented race in fantasy media, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. It's my honest underrated. opinion. <laughs> most underrated. It's like not the most common thing. Uh, no. I know. I don't know. I just. I. I know that a, a shortage of book-based spellcasting in in this mm-hmm. campaign, and even like from the get-go, there was no counterspeller. I probably want to be the person that takes up a counterspell, and mm-hmm. if I was this campaign. But yeah, that's. I think you know what. That, that's a good question to end it off. Just a final question for the GM: Who I would be, and so I'm just gonna scratch that off the list. Uh, well, I'll 
there's more to come and we'll do more another time. Um, there's one about other legged characters that might make an appearance. Yes, um, I'm sure there will be. Um, and um, the are all like stuff that can be answered. So uh, if anyone had, we probably we have time for maybe one more question. Uh, for many of you guys to me or your class go barbarian Ooh, mm-hmm. uh, that, that's a, like a really close second mm. yes, rogue mm-hmm. uh, my favorite character was a barbarian fighter mm. I, I am also partial to fighters I am a very specific hex Blade Paladin, all Ooh. Uh, or a coffee lock, but they've changed that. So our cocaine lock, I think, is actually what they should be called now. I do believe they fixed it. Yeah, they fixed it. They fixed it. But no one to have fun. No. <laughs> yeah. Class. Or a lot. Oh. Just a little, just a little guy. A relationship with a big guy. What more do you want? You know what I mean? Don't look at it. Don't. Don't. I don't. I saw the look before you even said it, and it it hurt. It hurt a lot, actually. It hurt my feelings. <laughs> All right, I'll thank you for answering my last question. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this fireside chat. I've been your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, and thank you so much for sticking with us, cold and all. I really appreciate all the incredible questions you've been sending in, and I hope we gave you some insight into what's been going on behind the scenes. As always, stay tuned for the next episode. And if you haven't already, make sure to catch up on episode 28 before the spoilers get to you. Also, we have a special contest going on right now. Name the podcast. Check out our socials for information. And thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time right back here by the fire. 